Hello and welcome back. Uh, in this exercise we're going to be looking at discrete probability distribution. So that is a distribution um, for a variable that cannot be infinitely divided. So these are discrete um, objects or discrete values. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 10, whatever. Uh, not divisible to any decimal places. So in this exercise we've got a grade distribution. Uh, we've got that distribution here by letter grade and this corresponding uh, grade point average. Uh, we can really look at this either by the letter grade or by the grade point average, whether it's numerical or categorical. It uh, doesn't really matter at this point. So what we're going to be doing, a lot of this might sound familiar because we've looked at uh, calculating these types of frequencies, these types of probabilities before in previous videos that we've done. And what we're going to be doing here is calculating what you may know as a relative frequency. And relative frequency is essentially calculating these frequencies and these probabilities. I'm using those terms interchangeably. Uh, as though our sample is a, a accurate depiction of the population. So here my sample, I have 50 students and I have the number of students who received each of these grades uh, out of those 50 and we're going to calculate our frequencies as our probabilities um, generalizing this information from the sample across the entire population. So the way that we do that well here for the first one what's the probability that a randomly selected student will receive an A? Well that would just be 9 out of those total 50. So if we just pull up uh, our calculator, so 9 out of 50, so that's a probability of 0 0.18. 0 0.18. So there's an 18% chance or a probability of 0.18 that a randomly selected student uh, will receive an A in that course. Now moving on to the, uh, the, the rest of these, uh, for the B, I have 11 out of 50 students, so that's 0.22. For the C, I have 21 out of 50 students, oops, 0.42. What's the probability of a D? This is 1 out of 50, so 0.02. And finally, for the F students, 8 out of 50. Oops, something's wrong there. 8 out of 50 is 0.16. Okay. So from this, um, we can actually, it's not part of the question. We've developed our probability distribution um, in a tabular form. We can also put this together uh, as a histogram. And again, this, this may look familiar. Uh, as we've done similar exercises in, in uh, previous um, sections of this, of this course, of these videos. So here if we put that frequency on the y-axis and we put our discrete variable across the x-axis, so here I'll put F, D, C, B, A. And now it's just a matter of plotting those frequencies. So I'm going to do this, you know, this is kind of a quick little aside, we're not being asked to do this in the problem. Um, but we'll just do this because we've got the information in front of us, so we might as well go through. So the F, what's the frequency uh, of, uh, or the, the probability of receiving an F? That's 0.16. So here I'm just going to ballpark, let's draw a line about 0.16. Probability of a D, 0.02, so that's somewhat smaller. 0.02 is down here. Uh, probability of a C is 0.42, so that one's much higher, way up here, 0.42. Uh, probability of a uh, B, this is 0.22, so somewhere in here, 0.22. And an A is 0.18, so that's a little bit more than F, a little bit less than the B, doesn't have to be perfect just uh, to give a general idea of here's that grade distribution, okay? Now, 
We can also determine, uh, well, for part A, show that the probability distribution satisfies the conditions for a discrete probability distribution. So those conditions are simply that any given probability is greater than or equal to zero. We can't have negative probabilities is basically what this is saying. So we look at our probabilities. None of those are less than zero. So this checks out. Everything's fine. The other condition for a discrete probability uh, distribution is that the, let me get rid of that, the sum of all of those probabilities is equal to one. So in other words, if I randomly select, in this case, one of these students, there's a 100% chance that that student receives one of these grades, right? So if we added up all of these probabilities, so we'll start at the bottom, I've already got 0.16 in plus 0 0.02 plus 0.42 plus 0.22 plus 0.18 equals few, equals one. Everything checks out. So we meet our two criteria uh, for this discrete probability distribution. Okay, let's, uh, so that's A. So yes, we have met those conditions. Uh, B. What is the probability that a randomly selected student receives a grade of B or better? What we're actually looking at here, and this again this may sound familiar, is we're looking at the, the, the union of two events. So we're looking at uh, the union between getting a B or an A. So using the addition law that we've we've already talked about uh, before, uh, calculating these unions, uh, the notation that we would use is, uh, uh, back then we would have used something like this, the B union A, right? So this is the union of these two events. Now, you might look at this and think, well, this is missing something, right? Because normally when we're calculating the union of any two events A and B, it would be the sum of those two events, so the probability of those two events minus uh, the intersection of those two events. Right? This was that addition law that we had looked at uh, some time ago. Now in this case, this we're still doing the same calculations, however, we don't have to worry about this because receiving an A uh, or a B, these are mutually exclusive events. If you receive an A, you can't also simultaneously receive a B, right? So these events are entirely mutually exclusive, so we just ignore uh, that. And so let me just clean this up. So in order to calculate the probability of receiving a grade of B or better, well, in this case, there's only two uh, two of those. If there's something better than an A, then we would have to add that to our calculation as well. Uh, but in this case, probability of a B is 0.22 plus probability of an A is 0.18. So the probability of getting a B or better is uh, 0.4. So we can do that. That same logic then holds for each of the other calculations. What is the probability that a randomly selected student receives a grade of D or worse? So again, that's a D or worse. The only one that's worse than that is an F. So now we're just going to add together, uh, add together these two probabilities here. So this is the uh, frequency or probability of a D. Oops, let me uh, keep this general. This is a D plus uh, an F. And so this is going to be 0.02 plus 0.16, and so that's 0.18. So a probability of 0.18 of receiving a D or worse. So now the same logic, you probably see the pattern of what we're doing now. We'll go on to the next one. What's the probability of receiving a B or a C? So that's the probability of a B plus that of a C. So this is going to be uh, C or B. Uh, we're looking at these two here. 0 0.42 plus 0 0.22. So this is 0 
fairly high chance that a randomly drawn student will receive a B uh, or a C in this course. Okay, so I, I hope that makes sense. It's, it's really now just starting to bring up some of the other exercises that uh, we've covered uh, in this series of videos and starting, st and starting to bring them together a little bit more uh, in terms of this particular type of probability distribution. So hopefully this makes sense. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.